Today, I'm thrilled to welcome one of my favorite Broadway leading men back to the show. He has two Tony Awards and a big juicy role making grown men cry in the Broadway musical Big Fish. Please welcome Mr. Norbert Leo Butts. Hi. Hi, Paul. This is uh, my 100th episode. I'm Hi. so thrilled that you're here because I said I have to have someone I genuinely like on. Oh. And I genuinely like you. You're one of my favorite people. Oh, so I'm well. so thrilled you're here. <laughs> <clears throat> how, how but wait, wait, what did they call you before? What was the Oprah? What did they call you? Paul? Wantopra. Paul Wantopra. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Your butts on Wantopra. Uh, I'm a big fan of yours. As I am. As a person, as a performer. So I'm thrilled you're here. I'm glad you wear like leather. I tried to go for the le I don't know. It's I good. don't know. Maybe it's like a midlife <laughs> crisis. Thing. Are you up to that? You know what? I'm in a Susan Stroman show, so I'm I'm svelte. Yeah. You know, I only come in two sizes. It's it was pudgy and <laughs> less pudgy, and uh, and so she's with so me. Abs in the now? So I, I kind of I'm working. Yeah, you, I, you got a little I watch body. These young guys on this, like I watch Aaron on your show, and they all look so amazing, and I always look like you know. Danny DeVito and so today, <laughs> DeVito. I, yeah. So today I, I pulled out the leather and like the tight, yeah, the tight white shirt because I'm, I'm dancing. You're in making a, a girl Stroman squeal show. out there, <laughs> and you are making grown men cry at Big Fish, huh? That that that's yeah, a big tissue of a musical. <laughs> I mean, I mean, come on, that's a that, big. <laughs> those, those last like 15 minutes, yeah. You're up there doing that big number, and you must just like, is, is it just wet? Are you just looking at wet out there? What's what's happening? Um, you know, I heard someone describe the show, maybe it was myself, I don't know, <laughs> as, as it's, it really is beaches for, for straight guys, <laughs> isn't it? It's like, yeah. it's terms of endearment for your uncle, yeah. Ed, you yeah. know, it's, it's, it is that, that kind of a show that, that gets men where they live. So is there a lot of like, uh, stage door therapy sessions? <laughs> or, or do you like, you know you, do a lot of people come up to you with... Overwhelming emotions. Kristen, first of all, the photos of Kristen Chenoweth with backstage. Oh. <laughs> Kristen, Kristen Chenoweth was just like, she was wet. She was. Ah, <laughs> Christy Dawn, I love that girl. I love her so much. Um, yeah, you know what did I do? I feel a real responsibility with the show because it's shocking what people feel. Um, I think once they see you sort of um, vulnerable and they, and they really connect with the characters and they relate and then they project their own losses or yeah. griefs on you, strangers will come up and they will say, I mean, Paul, it's like, I lost a spouse last week. My mother died four days ago. Right. Um, my child was diagnosed with, with cancer t th six months ago. You right. know, really, really intimate, private, um, painful things they will reveal to you and say, thank you, thank you, thank you for giving us uh, a, a voice or ha helping me to find beauty in that, yeah. you know? So you, you must feel a little bit of a responsibility to totally. actually communicate with them. Absolutely. I really, really, really do. Today, as a matter of fact, in my town, I live in Jersey, I was walking my dog, uh, a neighbor that I'm, I sort of know just from sort of passing her, you know, fellow dog owner yeah. or whatever, stops me. Saw the show three weeks ago. And then today I saw her and she waved me over. Her mother passed away last night. Wow. Oh and God. was telling me that she's just been thinking about the show. So you do. You, you can't, uh, it keeps you from taking uh, your work for granted. It keeps you from doing a paint by numbers performance. It keeps you from, um, from being dishonest. Mm -hmm. And uh, I love that. I love it, love it, love it. This is a big role, Edward Bloom. You, you play Edward Bloom. It, 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 it's such a big role, it took two guys to do it in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yes. I, and it, while I was watching it, I was thinking, wow, Norbert always takes on these yeah, right. colossal assignments. You know what I mean? There's so many times I see a show where I think like, <laughs> and, and you always nail it, but mm. you have these huge shows riding on your shoulder. Yeah. What, so what, um, do you feel it? Do you feel... I, I, that how it feels for you? It's the strangest thing because I, I've been having this conversation a lot with, with people who've seen, good friends of mine, you know, and, why, why are you working so hard? Why do you take it? Right. And I don't, I, I don't, I, there's some, I, I'm missing some part of my brain. I, I, I read the script of the source material. I get so excited about uh -huh. a part, you know. I don't think in those terms, you know. I don't, right. I, I, I guess I know it's a big role. Uh, that 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 that's what happens with so many of these though i just fall in love with with the the the, the character and I, I think I, I have to do that there's never a part of my brain that says 
well, you know, this is a Susan Stroman, Stroman show, show, so she's going to make you, you know, dance your ass off. Right. And, and did you're known you, for dancing your ass off. Did, you're, you're an Astaire <laughs> Award uh, recipient. Did you look at, you know, I always tell myself, did you look at the score and see the 17 numbers that right. you sang? And <laughs> I must have, but I just jump in. I uh -huh. just, it's sort of, it's, uh, I don't know. I was thinking, like, why isn't Norbert... I wonder if one day he's just going to do like a comfortable revival. Where a it's coming up, revival. Paul. It's coming up. It's and I thought you should play Cornelius with uh, Kristen Chenoweth with Hello Dolly. How about that, Cornelius? Yeah, that's that guy. But I, that, was, that was one that. This popped is to my mind. musical theater vocabulary. <laughs> Rent was my first musical, so I'm going to Hello Dolly. I know I saw the movie look it at up, some look point. It up. <laughs> but I have done The Matchmaker, the play. Oh, okay, yeah. In which I played Barnaby. Oh, okay, I was yeah. 19 years old. So right. I guess I've okay. Aged out of Barnaby now, haven't I? <laughs> yeah, unless we're doing little, slightly. <laughs> Although in that T-shirt, I don't know. You're a Barnaby. <laughs> <laughs> you could totally nail it. <laughs> so, so you think that maybe that's in your future, like a show that already it's, works? It's and coming. Then you up. just have to like plug in your magic. It's coming up. Yeah, uh, I'm 46. Uh, I am. I have loved. I I was actually on my way over here today uh, on the train, and I sat down and said. How long have I, Paul might ask me how long I've been in New York City. So I've been here, and that was the tail end of 96. So it's be 17 years, yeah. or 16 and a half yeah. years. And I've done 17 shows in New York. So I've done a play, I've done, this is my 11th Broadway show, wow. plus seven off-Broadway shows. 220 and awards. That's not counting uh, the workshops and the benefits. Of and course. The readings and yeah. all that kind of stuff. That's a lot, a lot of time on stage. And um, all, every single one except Speed the Wow, which I just went in for that one month yeah. thing, uh, has been original work. Yeah. And uh, that's, that's a lot of writers that I've worked with. And I've loved it. I've loved it. Mm -hmm. But now I'm ready to like <laughs> <laughs> move on to someone who is, you know, a script that is, is, uh, is already done. Because when you're working on a new piece, you know, I always say you have to be an actor and a dramaturg um, mm -hmm. at the same time. You, you have to, you have to become involved in the process of structuring that part, what you say in that role, mm -hmm. how you move in the role, um, everything about it. So it's an awful lot of work. Right. And I'm, I am, I'm, I'm feeling it this time. <laughs> Are you feeling it? I am. I am. I'm getting, I, I, I think I've crossed my, my physical limitations. I have to switch crossed legs because they, <laughs> they cramp up. There we go. So what do you do? Okay, so what are you doing a day off? Do you have like a man cave at home? I want to know about your life in Jersey a little bit. Um, unbelievably, and I say this with great love of my children, as hard as it looks what I'm doing on stage, it, it, it is in, in comparison a trip to Dairy Queen compared to what raising three daughters in Jersey is. <laughs> you know, I come to work, I do that uh -huh. to relax. I do that to... Big have, fish is the relaxation. That's where I, that's my downtime. Wow. <laughs> and, I, and, I, and I'm being slightly facetious, right. but I'm kind of not. I have, a, I have a two and a half year old, I have a 13 year old, I have a 16 year old. So, uh, and they're all girls. Right, yeah. Yeah. It's a lot. Yeah. It's a lot. And so with the older ones, you're, you know, you're driving around and doing all the activities. Is there dating and, happening Oh, yet? yeah. Oh, yeah? There's just some boys? Oh, yeah. How are you handling that? You know, uh, probably with not as much grace as I should be. Um, I'm, <laughs> no, I'm pretty cool with it. I, I, I tend to leave them alone. But I'm pretty strict in other ways, you know? I mean, I make sure that the grades are happening, and I make sure that yeah. the curfews are happening. You know, I do all that stuff. Yeah. That's a lot of work. And then, you know, whenever I'm not doing that, I'm running around with a two and a half year old and just trying to, you know, catch right. the pee before it hits the floor with the <laughs> potty. And, you know what I'm saying? That's like a lot of the day too, or, you know. If, if, you, if your um, oldest daughter met some punk that was like you were at that age, little Norby, Norby butts, yeah. would, would you be an acceptable I'd choice? I would be thrilled. I would be thrilled. Yeah, you were a good, you were a good. Uh... And I don't say that in any kind of a narcissistic way. Yes, people say that to me all the time. Oh, three girls, this is payback, this is karma. Right, 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 right. And I'm always like, I was never that guy with girls. I never was. Uh -huh. I, I had lots of girlfriends, and I, but I've always loved women. I've never been like a player. I've always just been like a serial monogamist. And uh -huh. I was the guy who loved to go to dances and actually got up and danced with my dates. And you know uh -huh. what I mean? I was like, I was a good date. You know, I, I, probably should have 
maybe imbibed less in, in certain substances. And um, uh, so I'm hoping that they uh, right. steer clear of that aspect of my past. But uh, I was nice. So to, I was action. nice to my girlfriend. The girls like you. You got a lot of action, little Norby. Like I oh. get a lot of action. Did you? Um, <laughs> a lot of school dances. Yeah, my kids are going to watch this. You know that. So <laughs> let's just the Keep word action should not be <laughs> in the in the interview. <laughs> So such there's a, no man such cave. A cheesy. Word. I do. I do have an office. An um, office. Okay. What's yeah. That, what's that like? Is it like your little oasis? Um, I, I I try to hide in there. Uh, <laughs> I have a a big leather chair in there. I have a lot of books. I have my instruments in there. Inst, inst, oh, musical instruments. Yes. Uh -huh. My instruments. What? What? My not, not medical. Instrument. My S and M instruments. My, <laughs> no, no, no. My, like, my you, aren't dentistry aren't you, instruments. Aren't you actually Doctor Butts now? Don't yes. you have a doctor? Doctor Butts. I am a doctor. What would Doctor Butts be a specialist in? I am a doctor of humanities. So if you, so when you're in your office with with your the, the thing on the wall that plaque, mm -hmm. um, and let's say you just had like let's say you had a weekend and you just were just gonna be able to just like I guess you had to veg a little bit between shows I guess never because these girls are always, these women are always around yeah but if you were just gonna sit down from the TV and just like veg out watching something what would you watch like what would be your your go to oh uh, in front of the TV yeah <laughs> do you do that thing that I do where it's like <laughs> here's what I do in front of the TV <laughs> I think I'm gonna get on. Nat Geo, you know, <laughs> they call it Nat Geo. I'm going to watch something for my brain. Right. I'm going to get on, you know, uh, uh, I'm going to watch all of the news channels simultaneously and then do a compare and contrast. I'm going to elevate my mind. And I start with that. Or I go to the that. IFC channel and I watch some, some French film, you know what I mean? Yeah. I want to do something good. And I always come back to 20 most filthy videos ever made. <laughs> <laughs> and that's where I am at the end of the night. It starts at Downton Abbey and it ends with, you know, Brittany. It, that's where, it, that's <laughs> how my TV watching kind of goes. Having said that, I don't get to watch TV. And so, um, yeah. but I think maybe that's why I gravitate toward the junk is because uh -huh. it's like, you know what? I really have to unplug here. Um, I, I can't do. Have you seen that? Uh, high end TV. Have you seen that Graceland show? Graceland? Graceland? Aaron's show? That Aaron Tavay, that kid, that kid, that he blew up, huh? That, he that, blew up. That kid? Yeah. He has fangirls. He has fangirls? Yeah, he has what a if, Actually, I want to Oh, show, girls who are fans. Yes, I guess, yes. Yeah, you, you do too, but... I'm um, sure he has <coughs> fanboys too. Come on. Yeah, I think so. But I, I think want to show he you has... something, actually. This is, this is the type of stuff that exists online when you're associated with Aaron Tavay. Oh, so <laughs> this, this is a really like lovely photo. Right, that was taken at your opening. Yeah, he came to see you, Big Fish. Yeah, it's a, that's a it's nice a great, photo. Ni it's a nice Bruce Clickish photo, actually. Yeah, and I'm, and so we're looking on Tumblr, and then we come across this. What's <laughs> <laughs> that? Right, here's the Somebody old part did of it. They a put face off. Oh my they, they gosh! They swapped your faces, and it actually took me like a little while looking at it to figure out what the hell it was. Wow. Isn't that weird? See? Is that weird? But look at how good I look with hair like Aaron Tveit. See, if I could get that working that? for me, I think I would be booking you need the to my own show. And I'm sorry, but he looks damn good with my face. <laughs> so this might be something you should just consider, you two. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah, so that, that stuff is out there. Holy um, cow. He, he's entered a whole... Have you ever had any encounters with like girls who say, like, what's Aaron Tveit like? Has that happened to you? What is Aaron Tveit like? Uh, yes, I'm sure they have. My own kids. What am I talking about? Yes, I have oh, teenage oh, yeah. daughters. <laughs> I'm like, hmm, do I ever have girls trying to get at Aaron Tveit? <laughs> Duh, every night at bedtime. They're like, Dad, so I was thinking about Aaron today. I really miss him. Could you think he could come to my 16th birthday party? My, my oldest daughter, I think, liter legitimately asked if he could come to her 16th birthday party. I was like, no, <laughs> no. She also asked me if she could have her 16th birthday party in Ireland. Yeah, I don't. Don't ask me. <laughs> this is this is this is true. This is my life. Uh, so you're the, you're the end to Aaron Tveit, basically. Yeah, I girls. am the end to Aaron Tveit. Actually, I was talking to Aaron a lot last week via text because my my team, the St. Louis Cardinals, were playing the Boston Red Sox in the World Series, oh, yeah. and Aaron loathes the Boston Red Sox. Oh. So he was, oh, you know, okay. a fan. He, he switched his loyalty over because he's uh -huh. a Yankees fan. So he went <laughs> right. So we're texting back and forth during the game. Oh, my God, did you see that hit? <laughs> of course, I'm running off stage after singing Daffodils. Oh, oh. 
I love you so much, Kate Baldwin. I'm dying. <laughs> you know, that's what the whole night was like for me. It was terrible. About a week ago, I went to a big party celebrating um, Wicked's 10-year anniversary, and I, I wanted to go and congratulate you because yes. you helped give birth to this this enormous... I know, uh, you're angry at me. The, no, angry. I'm not angry, but you're, you weren't there. But I know you have a show. You're in a show. Yeah. Your wife was there. Yeah, the you gave me a little bit of attitude better. when we first got down. You're like, so there was a great party the other night. I didn't see you there. So let's start the interview. <laughs> that was like how we started this interview. <laughs> it's great to see you at the party. Oh, wait, you didn't go to the party. No. And no you, you know. You've made like millions off Wicked, right? I mean, like, you get, no, you, don't, you, didn't, you haven't made millions off Wicked? See, this is why. Do you honestly <laughs> think... Ask, get, do you, you honestly think... I mean, is that a legitimate question? No, I just wanted to F with you. Oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah, okay, good. Because at first, because people ask me that all the time. Do people really think that? Uh, someone, a co star in Big Fish was like, God, you must have made so much money off the videos <laughs> on that show. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> you know what I mean? I, right. I, I left the show early to do Dirty Rotten Scott. I didn't even make money while I was there. Right. You know what I mean? I, right. I've never, you know, it's, it's, it's never. It's uh, funny that people think that. that. Yes, it's like, I'm an actor. I don't know. Maybe, maybe. A really, really successful, powerful actor can get a percentage of whatever those things are, but I surely don't have that. But um, I do. I have. I have something that surpasses monetary gain. <laughs> I have my wife. Yeah, that. And my baby. Yes. And that's what I took from. Yeah. Wicked. You got a good and family out of that show. I did. I did. I got a peach. And you're like a part of. Um, you know, with that show, that it's funny. Also, with the last five years, this this thing that ran like a couple months, right? Yeah, it was like this little show. Yeah, and, and then this album came out, and there's this whole between Wicked and last five years. I feel like your voice is sort of like something that anyone younger who's interested in musical theater they all mm. know. They all know you. Yes, that's weird. Yes, and here's the thing about those two shows, is that I can hardly. Uh, this is getting a little personal, but through both of those, I was going through such terrible personal times. Right. Sh you know, shortly after the last, last five years, I actually got divorced. Right. With a two-year-old and a four-year-old. It was like the worst, yeah. worst experience of my life. So you don't look back fondly on those. I, I get invited to all of the last five years things, or, yeah. you know, to come watch it or come see it. I'm like, I would not sit down to listen to that show. <laughs> right. If it were, you know, if you paid, it would be like watching videotape from a loved one's funeral, you know, like over and over. It really was. It was yeah. a very, very hard time for me. Yeah. And I find that that show is so beautiful. It, I understand the power of it because yeah. I, I, I sang it for those right. couple months and right. it hits really, really deep. But it's, it's when I listen to it now, I get, I get sort of, I have PTSD or something uh, uh, with it. It was a really, really rough time. And same thing with Wicked. I did, Wicked was the first show I did. Actually, I was going through. I was separated after the last five years, and then the divorce process yeah. was happening all through Wicked. And, um, and I, I got injured really bad. Yeah. I, I yeah. broke my neck and was out of the show for three months. It, it was just all sort of mm -hmm. really, really difficult times. And so those shows that have brought people so much joy yeah. and have had these beautiful lives are, are, were two of the hardest jobs I've ever done, just in terms of what I was going through personally. So um, it's funny. I, I, but, you know, great stuff. That's the beauty of it, right? Great stuff. Yeah. Were you asked to shows. do a cameo in the last five years film? You know, I was, and I would have loved to have done that. Um, Sherry and I you were going to be... Sherry did one. Did they get that on camera? I hope so. Oh, they definitely got fantastic. it. I don't know if we're going to use it. Um, <clears throat> I hope they used that. <laughs> they took a sip of water. <laughs> uh, yeah. It kind of um, went like that. Yeah, and zoom in. Yeah. Um. It was uh, awesome. It was my favorite part <laughs> of the interview by far. Um, uh, uh, so, yeah, you would have loved to. Do, you, Sherry, I know Sherry did it. Well, Sherry and I were going to be, it was, sounded like so much fun, we were going to be the auditioners. Right, yeah, behind the table. For her thing. Yeah. And as soon as they called and said, it's going to shoot for one day, I'm going through my mind. I'm like, who am I going to base this off of? I've had so many experiences where people were, I was like, all I'm going to do for the whole audition is I was going to be like, <laughs> while Kathy was doing her thing, I wanted like drool. And then I, I, just, I was like, that's it. It was going to be... So funny. And then what happened? I had a vacation. I took my kids to Paris for two weeks. Oh. And we had this plan for it like a year. Oh. 
and we had a shoot date, and they changed the shoot date, and oh. they moved it while we were on vacation. And I was like, I can't cancel my trip to Paris. So. I was highly suspicious because you weren't at the Wicked Party, and then you're not in the last five years film. And I thought, this, he just doesn't like no looking no, back no, on these things. No, no. <clears throat> and the Wicked Party, I told you, I had two performances. I'm sorry. And I'll, I'll, let you, I'll let you go. It's fine. Well, the two performances weren't the thing, but then it was the World Series. It was the sixth, fifth game of the World Series. No, it was the final game. It was the final game. It was the final game. Yeah, well, it, it, was, the, it, was, it was the sixth game we lost. We were in the seventh inning. We were beginning to make some, yeah. some get some traction. I, I, I could not. I had to prioritize it. It's funny that Broadway fans, I think, assume that casts are all like best friends. Yes. It's funny because you have these, and it, you know, if I think about people I worked with 10 years ago for a few weeks, yeah. I, I don't even talk to them anymore, but you're like linked to people. Yeah. It always makes me wonder about the real relationships. And so I wonder, is there anyone that you ever like, maybe like didn't get along with when you were working and then like later on you like became close with or? Um, I've been so, so lucky on it. Almost never have I had like someone so right. difficult that I couldn't. Um, you know what happens? It's like you know we were just talking about Kristen and 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 Adina and, yeah. and Aaron and these yeah. amazing people. And it's, it's like no, you go long periods of time without talking, and then you bump into them, and it's it's like it really truly is kind of like family. There's a, there's a there's something that's exchanged. Um, uh, some kind of spirit that's exchanged and you really are, because years go by and you just, with no boundaries, throw your arms around people, mm -hmm. you know. The last time I saw Dino, I was in the audience of once and they saw them the same night and I'm looking for our seats and I hear, Norbert. And, you know, there's people around seeing her and I just, I just jumped on her lap and, you know, started <laughs> kissing her. I saw a girl, a woman that I love, one of my most favorite Actors in New York City, Daphne Rubin Vega. Oh, love her, love she's her, one love of my her. favorites too. You know, we did Rent for a long time. I see Daphne like every three or four years. You know, at a benefit. Last time I saw Daphne, I hadn't seen her in three or four years. Right? I'm on a crowded subway car. I'm like on an A train. It's rush hour. From through across like 200 people, I see those smoky eyes <laughs> and that hair, and we see each other through a crowd of people. And she gives me that look, and she comes walking over to me. <laughs> Hello, sweetheart. She goes, <laughs> all she says to me is, haven't spoken to her in three years, she's like, baby, what did Cinderella say when she got to the ball? <laughs> and I said, what? And she said, <laughs> bye, baby. And she went out the car door, the subway door, and that's, that was it. That's that my was, favorite story I've heard in months. And I was like, <laughs> I love Daphne so much. <laughs> Hadn't seen her in three years. Told me a filthy joke. <laughs> And then walked out of the car and was like, bye, baby. I love it. I love it. I, this is, nothing makes me happier. I love seeing my fellow actors. Daphne is one of my favorite people. She's uh, the best. She's, she's up she's... there. And um, she also, she's sort of like this cool rock, rock chick. You know what I mean? And you, I was looking at the old footage I shot on opening night of Wicked. <laughs> Gosh. You still had those like those badass earrings. Yeah, I wore you... them as Fierro. That was my... <clears throat> oh, you actually wore them on stage? And... Yes. Oh, I did. so that hasn't carried through. They don't. I guess they haven't they don't carried. Pierce the Fierros. <laughs> I think because pierced ears kind of. I think by like even by like nineteen ninety eight ninety nine <laughs> they were waning. You're... I hung on there till what was Wicked two thousand and four. Two thousand and three. Yeah. I hung on an extra four or five years. <laughs> you know, I was thirty four when I played Fierro. You know, yeah. I was like, God, what can I, what can I do to hit? Oh, that was up? supposed to. Oh, earrings. That's what make you look younger. Yeah. 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 <laughs> So you don't do that anymore. There's, when's the last time you had those earrings up up in those ears? Uh, it's it's been a while. I have so, I have a couple rent. I would just you know I think I had four or five. Oh here. yeah, you did that whole thing. Yeah, I did the whole thing. So sometimes I still try to test and see if they're up there, but uh, <laughs> no, I think they're all closed up. Yeah. You uh you like you, you are kind of like a rock and roll guy though. Like what are you doing in these 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 like you know. Broadway musicals. What are you doing? Singing and dancing. I, I, you know, I, look at you. Look how badass looking you are right now. Like, I, 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 yeah. like, I, I wore my leather today. I got this. In and Paris. then you're gonna go sing Andrew Lippa songs and make men cry. And I don't know. It just seems like yeah. even like your 54 Below show, which was great, which yes. is preserved. Thank you. Preserved, right? The, is it? Well, oh, the yeah, first yeah, the one CD, was. Yeah, the first yeah, show, yeah. The first yeah, show yeah, was recorded. Yeah. But you sing a lot of like, like it's funny, like the the people who come wanting to hear you sing like Broadway stuff. Here's a retrospective of my Broadway show. Yeah, tunes. they're, they're going to be like, they're going to learn a lot, aren't they? They Those are, kids. and they're going to, you know, and they're going to be disappointed, and I disappoint. No, not disappointed. Listen, this is for a long time ago. I, I I have been 
disappointing people. Um, <laughs> that's been the that's been the basis. I mean, you say you know, oh, two Tony Awards and you know, great reviews. But the other side of that, you know, is that I have solidly disappointed people throughout. What does that mean? Where people want me to do Broadway stuff, and then they come hear me oh. sing, and uh, Rent was my first Broadway. I don't know Broadway stuff. Right. And then when I'm doing a, a play, I also have a master's degree in, 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 in acting, right. in which I did nothing but classical theater for right. uh, four to six years, you know? So when I, uh, when I do a more classic text, you know, people mm -hmm. are uh, disappointed that I'm not doing no a one's musical. Just, no one's disappointed. No one's disappointed. Are you kidding me? You well, I, I I know maybe maybe that's me, but at the stage door, it's always like, I miss you singing. Or if I'm singing, well, it's like, gosh, it, you know, you were good, but that play you did with Elizabeth Marvel, when you right. just, people don't know what an right. actor you are, you know, you're like, oh. and that's all I, I say that almost every night at the stage. I'm sorry to disappoint you. I'm sorry to disappoint you. <laughs> they do. It's just because you're you have so many talents and you can do so many different kinds of things. That's uh -huh. what it is. Yeah. You know what I mean? If you just did one thing in every show, then yeah. they would always be getting it. But you have a, you do a lot. You do a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But well, I, I was only wanted to ask you about being a rocker because I wanted to segue into when you used to have rock bands, right? You used to like, like yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I didn't do like I didn't. But do they have any like cool names? Uh, for... We were always sort of in flux with names. I guess my first band, I was a senior in high school and formed, and oh God, that that band was the band's name was Strike Four. Boy, wow, horrible, right? Maybe the worst name for a band you've ever heard, right, guys? Maybe the camera guys are like, Whoa. Um, then, uh, then uh, in graduate school, I was in like a a, a folk rock kind of hmm. acoustic thing, and we called ourselves the Dust Men. Oh, and then um, a friend of mine, her name was Effie. As a joke, we were playing in this coffee house, and she threw her bra on stage because it was like six people sipping coffee. Like it was such a non-rock and roll show. She's like, "What?" She threw a bra on stage. So then we changed the name to Effie's Bra. That was our band name for a while. I don't know. It was never. We never. I never took it to a level where I, I, you know, trademarked anything right. or, or became a. You never a worked business. your last name into it, no. into one of your band no. names. Could you come up with a band name use, utilizing your amazing? I don't know. Name. Rock your butts off or. Um, buttastic. The buttastics or I don't know. Sure. The the, the buttastics. <laughs> You know what I told myself before coming in? I was like, Norbert, play it cool today. Be like, be like, an, be like a smart, sensitive, oh. like thoughtful actor. You know what I mean? Who would sit here and be like, you know what I mean? And here I am. No, like, no, no. That would have been very disappointing for my 100th episode. Speaking I want the full butts. Really full about butts. The full experience. You know what it is? You do it to me. Is you're, it me? Yeah, your friends bring out the, the worst in you. That's... Yeah, they, they do. You know that someone's uh, uh, well, become I, a friend when they bring out your absolute basest, worst instincts. I just hope your daughters enjoy watching this crap. Yeah. Basically. <laughs> I'm doing it for them. So I have to let you get over to the, uh, the Neil Simon Theater. Yes. Make some magic. Yes, and come see Big Fish. Big right? Fish. Yes, yes. It's a, it's a big Broadway musical. You are fantastic. Thanks. Edward Bloom. Uh, you tell a lot of crap up on that stage. Well, maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe, you know what? Maybe every word of it's true. Maybe every word is true. And is anything, were there any untruths in this interview? Um, you, most of it, I think. <laughs> yeah. Total, yeah. total. Let me try to think if anything total was crap. true. The Daphne Rubin Vegas story <laughs> about the filthy joke in the subway was true. Yeah. Thank you so much for being here. You are a delight. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Thanks, Norbert. You're welcome, Paul. <laughs>